All right, perfect. Welcome, welcome, everybody, to a, another episode of the Third Hour of Power. This is Grady of This Mormon Life, and this week I am joined with, joined by Heather with LDS Youth Leadership. Heather, how's it going tonight? Good. How are you? I'm fantastic. I'm doing really good. I'm wearing a blue shirt, and blue is my favorite color, and uh, it just kind of makes me feel good when I'm wearing blue. Well, we're both wearing blue tonight. I, I'm colorblind. Oh, so I well. trust you. Because it doesn't look like blue to me. If you're watching the video feed, Heather's it's, wearing a shirt and it's blue. It's navy blue. Oh, that that might see. be why too. Navy, navy gets me because it looks kind of like purple. Mm, or it looks black. Yeah, yeah, or black. I think that purple is kind of like the liar of colors though. Because it's like, mm -hmm. I'm not quite blue and I'm not quite red. <laughs> um, but speaking of liars, this week's lesson is chapter 18. And it's the flip side of that because we believe in being honest. Um, and this lesson has been fantastic to read through and to study. The thing I've really liked already just so far is just the expanse of honesty and integrity. It's not just not lying. There's so much more to it. Um, you know, Heather, what were some of the things that stood out to you as you uh, studied this lesson? Well, interesting that you said the expanse of honesty and integrity because that was one of the first things. When I looked at it and he listed, he made that list of things that um, he considered issues of honesty, I thought that keeping the word of wisdom was a really interesting, I thought that was an interesting spin. Yeah. I, I never, I thought, I had to think about that one for a while. Yeah, he talks about how you know, um, you know, the word of wisdom is not just church standards, but they're, um, right. they're the word of the Lord on that subject. And that's, you know, yeah. you think about, and I guess the thing I thought was interesting is because I feel like breaking the word of wisdom as far as being God's law, that kind of principle could transcend to any of God's laws. Um, but maybe mm -hmm. he's just pointing that one out as something of import that sometimes we might miss. Um, yes. Yeah. Um, the, go ahead. I'll always yield to the guest. <laughs> go ahead, Heather. <laughs> All right. Um, so when I got thinking, and I got thinking about that, well, you know, what does he mean by that? And, and so I thought, okay, well, I'm going to see, was there anybody else who said something like that? Um, and the only person I could find when I went on LDS.org and looked was J. Reuben Clark. And he was talking about alcohol and he said, it knows neither honesty nor fair dealing. It is a total stranger to truth. Interesting. Really interesting, yeah. And then I did a, a little more. Go ahead. All right. Um, so there was another thing that in the lesson it talked about too, is he talked about um, fair employ. And one of mm -hmm. the things that he talked about was dealing in alcohol was, mm -hmm. was considered to be an, a dishonest um, employee. I just think because you know, there's some people will use that as a uh, kind of a decision point of, you know, can you sell alcohol if you're running a business and you have to make money and your restaurant won't survive if you don't sell alcohol and your hotel needs it. But it seems like here it's kind of saying we shouldn't be involved in that in our, in our businesses. Yeah, that was very interesting what he said about the importance of, of honest work. I liked that a lot. Yeah, and, you know, uh, talking about kind of those interesting pinpoints like the word of wisdom, the other one that I thought was interesting, it, it was the fourth point that he shared in this list of four things. He says that um, violations of traffic ordinances can be considered dishonesty. And I was going about 49 and a 45 as I was listening to the, uh, you know, my iPhone play back to me the words of the lesson. I thought, am I being dishonest by driving faster than the speed limit? Um, and started just kind of thinking about, you know, taking that logic back. I'm breaking the law, but am I being dishonest? And one of the things I thought about was the idea of that when we commit to be part of a society, we're committing to uh, adhere to that society's rules. Um, you know, as we, as we claim ourselves as citizens of a sovereign nation, we, we commit to abide by those laws. And so if we're breaking those laws, we're being dishonest. And I think that comes back with the word of wisdom is that, when we're baptized and we make a covenant to follow Jesus Christ and keep his commandments, when we break those commandments, we're being dishonest. Yes, yes. And I think not only that, sometimes it's a question of whether or not we're being honest with ourselves. 
Yeah, and the the end of the of the lesson, and they actually kind of uh, highlight it in the opening paragraph of one to bring up. But he says that if we would have the companionship of the Master and the Spirit of the Holy Ghost, we must be honest with ourselves, honest with God, and with our fellow men. And that really stood out to me. What kind of thoughts did you have on that quote? Um, interesting, because I. I think I think I picked I picked part of the same quote, um, just as a third one in case we did mm-hmm. the same two ones, and and so I think I I think I picked the a little bit earlier than that. But there is a joy that comes to one from being honest, and you know if you really think about it, there's a lot of peace in being honest. You don't have to worry about what story you told Joe down the street if you're telling the <laughs> truth. You don't have to remember what you tell people and be careful about what you're saying so much. Yeah, when I was a kid, I used to lie a lot. And I was good at it. I still am. <laughs> but I don't do it anymore. But I would lie all the time. And um, and it was hard. It was hard to be dishonest because I had to remember – Every single instance of a story that I told every single person involved and the secret combinations that we made to keep certain parts hidden from other independent parties. And I mean, it was exhausting. Uh, You know, as I grew up, I realized that I was not as good as lying as I thought I was and that my parents almost always knew when I was lying Um, and that it was better just to be honest and be upfront and say, hey, this is what the situation is. And um, and when I did make mistakes and I was honest, it was a lot better for me when I talked to my parents about it. Oh yeah, I mean, I think I think most people can handle uncomfortable honesty better than catching you lying. Mm-hmm. I think most people would rather have you be honest, even if it's something they might not really want to hear. Yeah, I mean, when it comes to being honest with our fellow men, I think that is is so important because yeah, people people would respond so much better when it comes that you're you've lied to them. You know, it really hurts your character and your your reputation. Uh, my dad used to always say that there's two things that no one can ever take away from you, and that's your testimony and the value of your word. All, you know, if you are always honest in your dealings, no one's going to doubt when you say things because they you have that reputation. And the lesson talks about Howard W. Hunter was working on a business deal, and you know they were kind of waiting for some paperwork to go through before they start to work. And one of the men involved in the project said. We don't wait for the, we don't need to wait for the paperwork to go through in the contract. If Howard W. Hunter, if Howard Hunter says that he's going to do something, he's going to do it. So we should just move forward. Yeah, and isn't that nice? I mean, that your reputation goes before you like that. That's a that's a really good that's a really good thing to have. Yeah. What other things stood out to you from the lesson, Heather? Um, I loved what he said about how integrity will solve all of our problems if we use it properly. <laughs> I thought that was I, I thought that was really cool. What did, let's see what did he list? Uh, problems in government, religion, industry and our individual lives. It would wipe out the awful scourge of crime, divorce, poverty and misery. It would make us successful here and save our souls hereafter. And you know, it's interesting. There are other principles of the gospel that you could say the same things about that they would that there are certain problems that if people would obey that principle, they would be almost completely eliminated. But that is a pretty lengthy list of problems that could be solved if people would just have integrity. Yeah, you know, especially right now we're in an election cycle both nationally and in my community locally there's a lot of elections going on and you know it's so hard because there's lots of people saying different things about the same subject this person does this that person says no i did this and someone else says someone else did this and someone else just says no i didn't and you know you don't know who to believe because there's just been in um you know in, in politics it, it talks about there's just been a history of of dishonesty in, in that in that sector and so you just you can't you don't know what to believe it's so hard to know who you're supposed to trust because there's been so much dishonesty and how great would it be if we had candidates that would say this is my viewpoint this is how i feel about it this is why it's right and then be able to make a, a good educated decision and say well, I want someone who does those things or I don't want someone who does those things. And, 
you know, let the candidate who represents the people best be the one who's elected. Yes. And, and, you know, how often does that question of honesty and integrity come up when it comes to politics? I mean, it's really, it's, it's, it's not a good thing. No, not at all. Um, you know, there was one area in the lesson when it comes to honesty that I thought was really interesting. And I, I, it was in the a very beginning of the lesson. Um, he, Elder, President Hunter is talking about, you know, how to find happiness in life. And he lists these things and these areas that we should be honest in. And one of the things he talks about is carrying our part of the responsibilities at a party. And I just thought, you know, okay, you know, party's over. It's time to clean up. If you've committed to stick around and help your friends clean up, that if you bail, that's that's being dishonest. You're not being honest if you do those things. And then I thought about, okay, how does this, you know, transcend even more to the gospel living? And I thought about when we volunteer at church. And I have found personally that vol opportunities that we volunteer for at church, people seem very at ease with just flaking on them. Um, maybe it's because they think that they're, since they're volunteering, then they're not really obligated or that, you know, someone else will, will, will do it for them. And I, you know, I just think that when we commit to, um, you know, lock up the church building, you know, that week, or we commit to, um, go and visit our home teaching families or, or let our home teaching families come visit us. And then when we don't make ourselves available or don't follow up with our commitment, that's being dishonest um, with with those that we committed to is being dishonest with the Lord. Um, and sometimes it even involves being dishonest with ourselves of our true commitment to following Jesus Christ. Oh, absolutely. I mean, if we say we're going to do something and then we don't do it, that's that's not being honest because people have to try, take us at our word. There's not, you know, they can either believe what we say or not. There's no guessing really, and whether or not we're going to do what we say we're going to do. And that can be incredibly unfair. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, when somebody does not show up and doesn't do their part, you know, what happens is a lot of times that falls on someone else's shoulders who tends to be one of the same 10 people. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> and it's and having, Go ahead. Go ahead. And having had that happened to me maybe a time or two, I could tell you it doesn't feel very good when you end up doing something because somebody else didn't do their part. Yeah. And it, and it puts you in a really hard position because now, like at least for me, I have hard feelings towards the person who didn't fulfill their commitment and it fell to me to pick up the slack. I have, I usually have kind of unkind feelings to them towards them. Um, and that causes some discord, even though I try to be kind, but I don't like that kind of stuff. But also, I think that, you know, when we kind of have that kind of um, attitude about things is that it makes it really hard and awkward for us to try and hold people accountable because we want to be nice and we want to be kind. And so we don't want to say anything that ruffle any feathers or hurt someone's feelings. And so when you have to come to someone and say, hey, you said you're going to do something and you didn't do it. Um, sometimes we have to be honest with that person, let him know how it affected us. You know, when yeah. you when you promise that you're going to come help us move someone on Saturday and you didn't show up. It was, it was hard for me because I had to do a lot of the extra work and a lot of people didn't, didn't show up. And so I was left to do most of that work and rather than taking an hour, it took me three hours and that was really um, not fair to my family and be honest with people so that they can see how their, their actions affect other people and their dis own on dishonesty. How Absolutely. Often, how often we just go, Oh, it's okay. Oh, we figured it out. And that's not always the most way, the best way to be honest. No, we're not always truthful when we say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, Heather, were there any other last minute things to the lesson uh, to round us out that you had in mind? No, I, I really enjoyed studying this one. Yeah, me too. Me too. And so as, you know, as you're a teacher in this, um, you know, study and pray. Try to find out what areas you think your class, your quorum, or your group um, really needs to learn more about. Maybe there's some areas that you've noticed in your your own uh, group or, or class that you know they need to learn more about and study those things out. For those of you that are our participants, you know, take a look at your own life. See if there's maybe areas that you can try today to be more honest in. Um, whether that's honest with others, honest with the Lord, or honest with yourself. Um, one of the thoughts I had about being honest with the Lord is when we're taking the sacrament and taking that honest accounting 
of our own lives in trying to say, you know, am I really willing to recommit and, and keep my baptismal covenants? And then, you know, as you do that, share those experiences in your class, really help participate in that discussion. And uh, Heather, speaking of, of discussions, what kind of things are going on over at your blog at um, LDS Youth Leadership? I just launched my first ebook. Really? That's amazing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, it is the it is the smart way to plan meaningful youth activities. Um, so I go through some of the some of the important leadership skills that youth leaders need to teach to their youth. But I also talk about the activity planning process, ways that you can engage and include less active youth, ways that you can get your youth more interested and excited about planning and participating in activities. Oh, nice. I want a copy of this. So okay. um, you and I have been talking because we uh, I just got recently called a few months ago to serve with the Deacons Quorum. And, you know, we've got a brand new presidency right now. And, you know, we're really focused on trying to create a youth driven program um, to not be leaders that, that, that push in to the program. But let, let us, you know, if we are asked to, um, you know, get pulled in to help and support, but let them lead. There was a, a, one of our stake leaders. He said, you know, don't step on the keys of your quorum president as an advisor. And that was really important to us to remember that we're letting them lead. And so I've been going to your blog already, looking for ideas and, and looking at some of your past posts about good activities for the youth and engage, engage them. And so I'm excited for this. So where could someone find that if they wanted to get a copy for themselves? It is at ldsyouthleadership.com mm -hmm. forward slash go slash TML as in this Mormon life, smart yes. way activities. Perfect. Okay? And if you use the code TML50, as in TML for this Mormon life, um, I'm offering 50% off to the first five of your audience members who buy the book. Perfect, guys. And so. if you are in the car and didn't have a pen to write that down, um, you can stop and pull over and write it down or go back <laughs> over to uh, the show notes for this episode. And we'll have those that link and that promo code there, so you guys can use that and, and, and get that book. Because I know as a as a youth leader, I'm always looking for ways to magnify my calling. Um, and Heather's done a great job on her blog, and so I'm really excited to see what she has in her book. Um, over at my my podcast, so you know, last month we've been really focusing on on family oriented posts, talking about things that we can do to help bless and benefit the family. And so one of the, our our recent posts we had a really good time with was was Pokemon Go. Me and my boys are having a great time playing that. And we go to cool places out here in Arizona and look for more Pokemon. And so, um, you know, if you have kids that you feel like you're feeling distanced from, um, check out the blog post. It talks just a little bit about ideas that you can use to strengthen your relationship with your kids. Um, and that's over there at our, our website at this-mormon-life.com. This I'm so mad at the guy that owned that domain. Now I have to, <laughs> if I wanted, I have to buy, I'd have to buy the non-hyphenated domain for like $3,000 and we're not there yet. So. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's a pain. Yeah. Keep clicking on our Amazon ads on our site. Maybe we can get there someday. <laughs> um, but you know, in the meantime, we're really grateful for you guys for listening and being able to have the opportunity to, to share these things with you guys. Um, if you enjoy learning more about the third hour lessons, you can always stop by our sister podcast. Uh, Sunday School Bonanza, where they discuss the um, t the gospel doctrine lessons um, from the Book of Mormon this year. Um, Jeff and his guests, they're actually part of our, uh, I would say, what's the right word for this? Kind of our, our umbrella of these podcasts, with the, which is This Week in Mormons. And Jeff and Al, they're in a great program. They've got great articles on their site. And their, their kind of flagship podcast, This Week in Mormons, talks all about uh, Mormon news, things that Mormons are doing that are awesome, and even things the church are doing. And they're doing a great job even getting exclusive stories now from the church in their newsroom. So make sure you guys check those out. Those are also linked in the show notes on the, the accompanying blog post for this episode. And until next time, my name is Grady, and on behalf of Heather, we wish you all a fond adieu.